Snow, my mom's from Bali, and we are TTIC, and I'm going to read our disclaimer. TTIC, also known as the Truth in Christ, is a Bible-based organization. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. We teach the Bible as it is written. We are not a hate group, nor do we teach violence. We do not condone any acts of hate or violence against any race, ethnicity, gender, and religious groups. We firmly believe in abiding by the laws of the city and state. If you witness any member of TTIC committing a crime, please contact us and the proper authorities. Shalom, Mosiah Christ, I'm Brother Moore. We are TTIC, which stands for the truth in Christ, just in case you didn't understand. All right, we're going to start off today with Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 5. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 5. Today's class is called a fearing is a must. Today's class is called fearing is a must. Ezekiel 18 in verse 5. Read. But if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right, uh -huh. and have not eaten up the mountains, eaten upon the mountains, uh -huh. neither have lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel. So it says, if a man be just, let's deal with that just. Give me that in Romans 2. Romans 2, in verse 13. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. So the doers of the law is just before God. The doers of the law. So if you're a doer of the law, you that's what makes you just before God. So when you do God's laws, that's what makes you just. So now let's start with 18 and 5 again. Ezekiel 18 and verse 5. Uh -huh. But if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right. So if a man be just, he's a doer of God's laws. He does what is right. Watch this. And have not eaten upon the mountains. Neither have lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel. Read. Neither have defiled his neighbor's wife. Uh -huh. Neither have come near to a minstrel's woman. So a man is just, he don't go after idols. Other things of the world, money, silver, gold, uh, uh, crosses, uh, chains with, with, with idol uh, things on them. You don't go after those things if you was just me. You shouldn't have none of that thing on you. No star, no none of that. You shouldn't have none of that thing on you. That's what he's just saying. No, none of the idols of Israel. Those are idols of Israel. It says also says, Neither has he de defiled his neighbor's wife. Meaning, you wouldn't mess with your neighbor's wife if you were just me. A just woman would do the same what? Same thing. The next one. It says, neither come to a neither come near a woman on her menstrual. Meaning you wouldn't go to a woman when she was having a what? Her cycle. You're not gonna go to a woman when she's having a cycle. Come on. And have not oppressed any, but have restored the debt to his plagues. That restored the debt of his plagues. Paid back. Paid back the debts of his plague. Somebody give you something, you're going to pay it what? You're going to pay it back. If, they have, if somebody give you something to hold for collateral, you're going to give it back to them when they, when, when they give you what? Money. Read, watch this. It says, have spoiled none by violence, but have given his bread to the hungry. And have covered the naked with a garment. And covered the naked. He gave his bread to the hungry. And have covered the naked with a garment. So you're covering the sinners with what? You're covering sinners with what? Philosophies. No, 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 no. Read it one more time. Okay. Yeah. And have not oppressed any, Ezekiel 18 and verse 7, and have not oppressed any, uh -huh. but have restored to the debt for his pledge. Read. 
have spoiled none by violence. Come on. Have given his bread to the hungry. Read. And have covered the naked with a garment. They covered the naked with a garment. Give me uh give me Isaiah 61 and verse 10. It's going to explain what it means to cover the naked with the garment. Isaiah 61 and 10. Isaiah 61 and verse 10. Read. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. Read. My soul shall be joyfully in my God. Read. For he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He'll clothe me with the garments of salvation. Read. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. He will cover me with the robe of righteousness. So when you when you when you when you go back, and we go back to Ezekiel, it says he covered the naked with a garment. He gave them guys what? He gave them the laws. That's what a just man supposed to do. Watch this, read. He that have not given forth upon usury. Come on. Neither have taken any increase that have withdrawn his hand from iniquity. That's what usury is. Like, I give uh, I give soldier Herman five dollars, right? And I charge her soldier Herman needs to borrow five dollars. And I say, okay, I give you five dollars. But then I say, I'm soldier Herman, I need ten dollars back. That's usury. That's that's uh what they call it uh that interest. The interest. They add interest to what it is that they give it. They want interest back with their money. Verse nine. Oh, keep on going. Verse eight. I'm sorry. Yeah. It says, Neither have taken any increase. Three. That have withdrawn his hands from iniquity. Have withdrawn his hand from iniquity. Have executed true judgment. Have executed true judgment, read. Between man and man. And between man and man. What do you mean he has executed true judgment? He has executed true judgment. Let's get that real quick. Give me that first, uh, give me that in uh, James 2 and... Uh, James 2 and 10, I believe. James 2. No. Hold on. 9. 2 and 9. Yeah. James 2 and verse 9. 3. But if you have respect to persons, 3. You commit sin. So, when, when, if you have respect to persons in judgment, you commit sin. Meaning, if you, if, 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 if you got two brothers right there, and one brother does something wrong, and the other brother does something wrong, but you only judge one brother. That's respect to what? Persons. Watch this, read it again. It says, but she have respect, but if ye have respect to persons, read, ye commit sin. Come on. And are convinced of the law as transgressors. Are convinced as a law as a transgressor. So now watch this, we're gonna go into the law real quick. Give me Deuteronomy chapter one. Deuteronomy chapter 1, and we're going to start with 17. Hold on, let me get that real quick. Make sure. Yes, 12 and 16. Deuteronomy 1 and verse 16. And I charge your judges at that time, saying, Here are the causes between your brother and judge righteously between every man and his brother. So here your cause between the brother and judge righteously between, uh, between each man. Watch this. And the stranger that is within him uh -huh. or with him. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment. You should not what? Respect persons in judgment. You should not respect persons in judgment. So partiality. partiality. Come on. But ye shall hear the small as well as the great. You should hear the small, meaning the less fortunate, more than the one men of much renown. Read. You shall not be afraid of the face of man. Uh huh. For the judgment is God's. Because the judgment is God. And the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me, and I will hear it. See, you see that thing right there? So, so when you know how men be, that's what it means if you ain't have respect to person. It can be your best friend, it can be your father, it can be your daughter, it can be your son, it can be whoever. Because when you when you judge them, he said don't be scared of their face. Because you know they look down their face on them like, why are you judging me? They all of a sudden they too pop. Only God can judge them. You know what I mean? That's how they, that's how they become. So that's why he said don't 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 look at their faces. 
Where's that? Where's that one? Is that Jeremiah one? Let me get it real quick on that on what we talked about real quick. Let me get it. Jeremiah. Let me see. I think it's two or one. Let me get there real quick, please. Is it Jeremiah? I think it's Jeremiah. No, is he? Uh, hold on, let me see. Jeremiah. Yeah, two or well, one is seventeen. That's what I want. Jeremiah. Yeah. Jeremiah one and seventeen. Watch this. This is what I want. Jeremiah one and verse seventeen. Uh huh. <clears throat> It says, Thou therefore gird up thy loins. And gird arise. up thy loins and what? Arise. Read. And speak unto them all that I commanded thee. Read. Be not dismayed. Don't be shocked. At their faces. At their faces. Lest I can confound thee before them. So he said, Don't be shocked. Because it could be your mother, and your mother be like, It could be your father, and your father be like, It could be your best friend, and your best friend be like, Don't be confounded. Don't be shocked. Because they're going to look at you like, well, why, why are you correct me? Right? That's what he said right there. So let's go back. Let's go back, officer, to Ezekiel 18. Hey, what verse was we at? Was it 8? That we said? No, nah, nah. nah. Soldier, uh, Soldier Hunter, are you striving? You striving? You striving? Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead, because I don't. You see it on there? No, I don't see it on her. But it is on her? On your phone? Okay. It, I don't know. It's crazy. <laughs> what you got? As, it just they pop up over here. Okay. I see it. Go here. Ezekiel 17 and verse 9. Three. Have walked in my statutes. Have walked in my statutes. And have kept my judgments. And have kept my judgments. To deal truly. He is just. Hold on. To deal what? To deal truly. Three. He is just. See, that's a just man. So if you're doing these things truly, you are just. You see these things right here? He said, if you're doing them truly, you are just. Watch this. It says, he shall surely live. He shall what? Surely live. He shall surely live. Say the Lord see, God. God says you surely shall live. That's what we got to be concentrating on. We got to be concentrating on these things right here because today's class, spirit is a what? Must. So to, to be a fear, the fear of God, the fear of God, just a recap real quick. The fear of God, you got to not commit idolatry. You cannot go near your neighbor's wife. You cannot sleep with a mistress woman. You cannot oppress your own what? You cannot, you can you uh you you have to restore the debt debtors of his pledge. You have to spoil, you have you have to not not spoil or not put you have to not put balance towards your what? People. You have to give food unto the hungry. And they can also bread, give it bread and can also give it to knowledge unto the what? Hungry. And go both ways. And have to cover the uh, nakedness with a garment. Cover their nakedness with a what? Garment. Meaning what? You have to give them the laws so they can come out of what? Sin. Watch this. Not give you, not usury, not charge people extra money for when you give them something. Uh, exercise true judgment between man and man. Have walked in all my statutes, God says, keep my judgment. Surely, he's a just man, surely, God said. Surely that is a just man. So how do we get today just man? A just man today is a just man. He labeled himself as, he says a name, he becomes just. He wears a mitri, he becomes just. He wears an ephah around his neck, he becomes just. How do we get these things? He wears a, a shield of supposed to be David, which I still ain't seen in the Bible. He's supposed to be just. That's why everybody got their own what? Righteousness. Give me that Proverbs uh, 3 and 5, please. Proverbs 3. 
In verse 5. Uh -huh. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And so the Bible says trust in the Lord with all thy heart. How do you trust in the Lord? Through this battle. Hold on real quick. Give me time more than one real quick. How do we trust this? The Bible says trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Watch this real quick. John 1 and verse 1. Some of y'all trust in you. You trust in the things that is on this earth. You trust in your little man down there. You women, you trust in your little woman down there. Y'all don't trust in God. You trust in things that can satisfy you. But watch this, what he says. Go ahead. John 1 and verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And the Word was God. Come on. The same was in the beginning with God. Uh -huh. All things were made by him. All things was made by him. I'm going to jump down on it where he was made in the flesh also. Verse 14. Three. And the word was made flesh. And the word was made what? Flesh. And the word was made flesh. Come on. And dwelt among us. And dwelt among us. So the word was made flesh. So Christ was a living, walking law. Everybody understand it? So must we be. So must we be. We must be that same example to our people. If we fall and bump our heads, do we stay down and say, oh, woe is me? No, we must get up and continue to keep on going. Watch this. Let's go back to where we was. Where was we before that? Uh, Proverbs 3, yeah. You want that again? Yeah, Proverbs 3 and 5. Proverbs 3 and verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And lean not unto thy own understanding. And lean not unto our own understanding. Because we as folks, we lean to our own understanding. We be out here thinking that we know something, but we lean into, we lean our own understanding, which we lead into our own death. That's going to, that's going to kill us. For any reason, watch this, give me, watch this, give me Proverbs 29. And 25, watch this. Proverbs 29 and verse 25. Read. The fear of man bringeth a snare. The fear of man bringeth a snare. A fear of man brings a trap. Watch this. But whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. So when you fear God, you shall be safe. When you fear men, that's a trap for you. Watch this. Read. Many seek the ruler's favor. Many seek the ruler's favor. Many gonna seek the people that is in, in power. They're gonna seek uh, they're gonna seek their uh, trust. Their uh, uh their uh huh? Give me another word. Approval. approval. There you go. That's a good word. They're going to seek their approval. Come on. Many seek the ruler's favor, but every man's judgment cometh from the Lord. Every man's judgment cometh from God. Every man. Read. Watch this. An unjust man is an abomination to the just. See, that's how you know who's who. When, when, you, when a brother got hatred, that's how you know who's who. See, God, you remember God said he's going to separate the wheat from the tares? That also goes into this right here with brothers. Men of Israel against men that supposed to be of Israel. Read it again. Watch this. An unjust man is an abomination to the just. And so an unjust man is an abomination. An unjust man going to hate somebody that is unjust. Watch this. And he that is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. And the, so a just man going to hate a wicked man, and a wicked man is going to hate an unjust man. That's what we got to understand. That's the whole point of fearing God. When we fear God, Christ told you that. Christ told you that in uh, John chapter 15. Give me that also. John chapter 15. Let's start with verse 18, please. John 15 and verse 18. Read. If the world hates you. If the world hates you. You know that it hated me before it hated you. See, that's why you got to understand these things. If the world hates you, it's the people of this world. 
If they hate two, they hated Christ before they hated two. Meaning, remember we went to John 1 and 1? Christ is the what? Word. Before he came in the flesh, people hated the what? Before Christ came in the flesh, people hated the what? Yes. They hated the word of God before Christ came in the flesh. It's evident. Watch this, read. If you were of the world, if you was of the world, the world would love his own. See, if you was of the world, the world would love his own. If you was of the world, people be all on you. Hey, man, you want to go hang out, man? You want to do something, man? Want to play this, man? Want to play that? Because if you was the world, people love of the world love their own. Watch this. But because you are not of the world. Because you're not of the world. But I have chosen you out of the world. But I chose you out of the world. Therefore, the world hated you. Don't nobody want to play a game with you. Nobody want to play polo. Nobody want to play uh, 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 chess. Nobody want to play cards in the world. They don't want to play with you. You know why? Because when you speak, you speak with the oracles of what? See, when you worldly minded, carnal minded, you go around people and you still got carnal, carnal sayings in your in your mouth. So they 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 accept you. Well, he's an Israelite, but you know he still speak worldly. That's what my barber told me when he see my nephew. Said, so I see your nephew. Seems like he's coming back to reality. He's speaking more, you know, more of the American ways. Of, I said, wow. That let you know. But his comment for me was, you still sick. <laughs> That's what's up, bro. Just cut my hair. That's how I be. Let's go back. <laughs> give, me, give me first chronicles. We're gonna start off. Give me first chronicles chapter 16, verse 8. <laughs> yeah, we do it. First Chronicles 16 and 8. First Chronicles 16 and verse 8. Come on. Give thanks unto the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Make known his deeds upon the people. Give me First Chronicles 17, 19, please. First Chronicles 17, verse 19. Read. O Lord, for thou servant's sake, and according to thine own heart, has thou done all this greatness. Mm -hmm. And making known all these great things. And making known all these great things. O Lord, there is none like thee. Neither is there any God beside thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. With our ears. So it says, O Lord, thy servant, for thy servant, for thy servant's sake, and according to thy own heart, hast thou done all this greatness, and making known all these great things. So, now let's go back. Until 16 and 8 again. First Chronicles 16 and verse 8. Give thanks unto the Lord. Duh. Call upon his name. The, so when we when we give it thanks to the Lord, call upon his name. We're giving him thanks for giving us all these great things. He's giving us, he's giving us understanding of all these great what? Things. That's why we went to first round of 6, 17. He's giving us understanding of all these great things. Watch this, read. Make known his deeds among the people. Make known his deeds among the people. Come on. Sing unto him. Sing songs. Sing unto him. Sing songs. Unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. I'm sorry. Songs. I said songs. <laughs> yes. Sing songs unto him. Talk ye of what? Of all his wonderful wondrous talk, works. Talk of him all his wonderful works. Watch this verse 10. Glory ye in his holy name. The whole glory ye praise in his glory in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Give me 16. Stay right there at 16. Give me 27. We're going to go 27 to 31. Watch this. First Chronicles uh, 16 and verse 27. Read. Glory and honor are in his presence. Glory, praise, glory is praise. Honor is in his presence. Come on. Strength and gladness are in his place. But strength and gladness are in his place. Strength. Having the strength 
to carry on. That's why Christ, give me that, give me that uh, uh 24 and 13 house, Matthews. I'm coming right back to that. You can drop it after that. Matthews 24, verse 13. Read. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. See, so that's the that's the let's go back to what I was playing it then. It says, Give unto the Lord. Uh, give unto the Lord. No, glory. Glory and honor are in his presence. So God is in his presence. Strength and gladness are in his place. When you have strength in the Lord, hold on, I got one more. I'm gonna put it all together. I'm sorry. Give me give me Philippians. Philippians. Philippians 4 and 13. Let me let me get let me get there. Hold on before you say it. Let me make sure I'm saying it. Got the right one. <laughs> No, that it ain't Philippians. It's Hebrews. I believe. No, hold on. Let me look at it. Yes, it's it. It's it. Philippians 4 and 13. Philippians 4 and 13. I'm sorry, guys. I'm confusing my own head. Read it. Read it off. Sorry. Philippians 4 in verse 13. Watch this. Read. I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me. I can do all things in Christ which strengthen me. So now let's go back and read Matthews. Matthews 25 in verse 13. Matthews, uh, what did I say, 25? Yeah, no, Matthews, uh, uh, what was we before that? Matthews 24 and 13. Matthews 24 and verse 13. There you go. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. So you, if you endure to the end, the same shall be saved. How can you, you gonna, the reason why you gonna endure because you got strength. The reason why you got strength is because all things is possible in Christ. That's why you got strength. He didn't endure to the end, the same shall be saved. The only way, only way you can endure if you believe that all, you can do all things in Christ. Through Christ, you can do all things. That's the only way you're going to endure to the end. Now, let's go back and, and verse 28 again. First Chronicles 16 and verse 28. Uh-huh. Give unto the Lord. No, no glory. 27. 27. I'm sorry. It was me. Uh, glory and honor are in his presence. Glory and honor is in his presence. Come on. Strength and gladness are in his place. Strength and gladness is in his place. So when we have strength, we're going to have what? Gladness. Why are we gonna have gladness? See, this is one of the things that we didn't understand. Go to Deuteronomy 28 and 47. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 47. Right here. Because thou servest not the Lord thou God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. For the abundance of all things. You should be happy that you able to get God's word. You should be you should be proud as hell that God gave you his word. He'll woke you up on his word. You should be happy as hell, man. That's the gladness and the strength. The strength is his word. And the gladness is that you are able to receive his word for a chance to get eternal life. You glad that God did not forget about you. You glad that God didn't say, you know what, you're a heathen. You ain't glad you glad God didn't say you're a cow, a dog, a bee, a fly. No, you're an Israelite. That's the gladness you're supposed to be. But our people ain't never glad. They don't care if we Israelites. They care about themselves. Verse 28. I mean, I mean, so, yeah, keep on reading. 28. First Chronicle 16, verse 28. Read. Give unto the Lord, ye kindreds of people, of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his, <coughs> excuse me. I'm sorry. Unto his name. Give the praise due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Read. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his of holiness. Rock, worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Come on. Fear before him, all the earth. The world also shall be stable. 
that it be not moved. Breathe. Let the heavens be glad. Let the let the heavens be what? Glad. Let the heavens be what? Glad. Breathe. And let the earth rejoice. Breathe. And let man say among the nations, the Lord reigneth. Did you see that? That's talking about the Israelites. Let it say, let it say among, amongst the nations, the Lord reigneth. So the God rules in this world. Give me Psalm 784, please. Psalm 78 and verse 4. Three. We will not hide them from their children. We will not hide them from their children. Showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength. So we not uh, so we uh, Hold on, we not had it from the children. So the for the generation and um keep on reading. Watch this, verse five. Verse uh five. Here it goes. Uh, for he established a testimony in Jacob. So he established a testimony in Jacob. This is what we would not have for my children, read. And he appointed a law in Israel. He appointed a law in Israel, read. Which he commanded our fathers that we should make them known unto the children. And we should make them known to the what? Children. To the children. So now let's go back. Let's go back. So that's what God, he said that we should not have them from thy children. Talking about his laws. His laws. We should not have them. Let's go back to second. I mean, first Chronicles sixteen, and then we're gonna go back over to the beginning. Uh, 20, uh, sixteen and verse eleven. Sixteen verse eleven. Yep. First Chronicles sixteen and verse eleven. Uh huh. Seek the Lord in His strength. Seek, seek the Lord in His strength. Seek His face continually. Seek His face continually. So seek the Lord in His strength. His strength is the Bible. Seek the Lord in his strength. The strength is his babble. Hold on real quick. Let me see. Can I find this? I'm not going to waste a lot of time. I'm going to hit it and miss it. If I get it, I get it. If I don't. Give me First Peter's chapter 1. We're going to read down off this, okay? Chapter 1, and we're going to start with verse 2, and we're going to go to verse 5, okay? Uh, yeah, and for, seek the Lord in his strength. Watch this. First Peter 2 and verse 5. No, I'm sorry. First Peter 1 and verse 2. We're going to read down to verse 5. Okay. First Peter 1 and verse 2. Read. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God. So now elect according to the foreknowledge of God. Y'all, the elect is who? The Israelites. Come on. Through sanctification of the Spirit. Through sanctification, through the cleansing of the Word of God. Read. Unto obedience and uh, sprinkling of blood of Jesus Christ. To the obedience and sprinkling of blood of, the G of Jesus Christ. Read. Grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. Read. Blessed be the Lord God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Read. Which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us. Again, unto a lively hope of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Here he comes. To an inheritance incorruptible. To a what? Inheritance incorruptible. Incorruptible. To an inheritance that is incorruptible. Meaning it's not going to be no sin without spot or blemish. Read. And undefiled. And undefiled. Read. And that fadeth not away. It is never going to go away. Come on. Reserved in heaven for you. It's reserved in heaven for you. Come on. Who are kept by the power of God. So th this thing right here, you are kept by the power of God, meaning his word. Watch this. Through faith. Through faith. Through the belief. Unto salvation. Uh-huh. Ready to be revealed in the last time. See, through, that's how you get salvation right there. That's the power. That's the strength of God. It's the word of God. That's the power and the strength of God is the word of God. Let me see where it is. Okay, let's go back. First Chronicles. Yep. Go ahead. First Chronicles 16 and verse 12. First Chronicles 16 and verse 12. Three. Remember his marvelous works that he have done, uh -huh. his wonders and the judgment of his mouth. And so remember the marvelous work that he's done, his wonders and his judgment of his mouth. Come on. 
O ye seed of Israel. O ye seed of Israel. So they're the only one. That's why when you read uh, Psalms 147, 19 and 20. Come on. It says, O ye seed of Israel, his servant. It's O ye seed, you know, uh, yep, come on. His children of Jacob. His children, ye children of Jacob. His chosen ones. His chosen ones. Watch this, verse 14. He is the Lord our God. He's the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. His judgment is in all the earth. Give me James chapter 2, verse 12. James 2, in verse 12. Uh huh. So speak ye, and so do, uh -huh. as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Stop. So it says, so speak ye, so do. So whenever we speak, we must what? Must do. Let's do. That's, that's the fear is a fear is a must. That's the just man. Whenever you speak, you must what? You must do. So watch this. Come on. Verse 13. For he shall have judgment without mercy. So if you don't do, if you don't speak and do what you're speaking, God shall what? Read one time also. For he shall have judgment without mercy. He's not going to have no mercy on you. None. He's not going to have no mercy on you. So if you doing, if you doing you, guess what the mercy going to be? None. Watch this. Read. And he showed no mercy. And mercy rejoices against judgment. And mercy, why do mercy rejoice against judgment? You know why mercy rejoices against judgment? Because now, the opposite of where you was getting judged for doing wrong, you know that you're not doing wrong, so you get a reward for doing what? Right. There is mercy in judgment. Hold on, let me see. All right, let's go back to Ezekiel 1636. Ezekiel 16.36 Ezekiel 16 In verse 36 Greed Thus saith the Lord God Thus saith the Lord God Because thou filthiness was poured out Because thou filthiness was poured out And thou nakedness discovered through thy whoredom And thy nakedness discovered through thy whoredom Meaning thy sins were discovered through thy whoredom Come on With thy lovers With thy what? Lovers With thy lovers Come on and with all the idols of the abomination. And then with all the idols of thy abomination. Come on. And by the, the blood of thy children. By the blood of thy children. Which thou didst give unto them. Which thou didst give to them. So now watch this. We're going to go from our giving Lamentation chapter 1. Lamentation chapter 1. And we're going to start with verse 6 through 10 to explain some of that. Lamentations chapter 1, we're going to start with verse 6 and go through 10. Okay. Right there, have this. Yep. <laughs> Lamentations 1 and verse 6. Uh -huh. And from the daughter of Zion, all her beauty is departed. From the daughter of Zion, all her beauty is departed. Watch this. Her princes are become like hearts. Her princes have become like hearts that find no pasture. And they are gone without strength before the pursuer. And stop. Let me let me explain to you because some of y'all don't know what Zion. Zion represents Jerusalem. Okay. Uh, give me First Kings chapter one verse eight. First King, I mean First Kings chapter eight verse one. I'm dead on it. I'm everywhere. First Kings chapter eight verse one. Real quick, we're gonna show you. We're gonna explain to you that Zion is talking about Israel, Jerusalem. First Kings eight and verse six. And the priests eight and one, eight one. Uh, First Kings eight and verse one. Uh -huh. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel uh -huh. and all the heads of the tribes, Read. the chief of the fathers uh -huh. of the children of Israel, of the chief of the fathers of the children of Israel. Read unto King Solomon in Jerusalem. Unto King Solomon in Jerusalem. So watch it. So we always we always he gathered everybody to Israel to Jerusalem. Watch this. That they might bring up the Ark of Covenant. Then they're gonna bring up the Ark of the Covenant, read of the Lord. Read. Out of the city of David. Out of the city of David. Which is Zion. Which is Zion. The city of David is Jerusalem. So Zion is another word for Jerusalem 
or Israel, whatever you want that you want to say, okay? Alright, so let's go back. And then read that again with that understanding, verse 6. Lamentations 1 and verse 6. And from the daughter of Zion. From the daughters of, of, of Israel. All her beauty is departed. All her beauty is departed. Read. Her princes are become like hearts. Her princes are men that become like our princes and come like hearts. Come on, which is dear, read. They find no pasture. Then they found no pasture. Can't find no pasture. Come on, read. And they are gone without strength before the pursuer. So they are flee without strength before the pursuer. The pursuers is the other nations, read. Jerusalem remembered in the days of her affliction. Uh-huh. And of her miseries. All her pleasant things that she had in the Days of old, Three. when our people fell into the hand of the enemy, when that people fell in the hand of the day uh, of of uh, uh, people fell in the hand of the days, uh, which Jerusalem remember in the days of her affliction and of the misery of all her pleasant things. Where you where verse with? We had a uh, uh, verse seven. Okay, I'm read. Okay, in the days of the things that she had in the days of old. Come on, read. When her people fell into the hand of the enemy. When the people fell into the hand of the enemy, watch this. And none did help her. None did help her. The adversary saw her and did mock at her Sabbath. See, the adversary saw her and did, did what also? Mock at her Sabbath. They mocked at her Sabbath. They mocked. So the, the enemy saw us, right? And they mocked at our Sabbath. What the what happens today? Let's break it up today. What happens when you tell your boss you need all for Sabbath? They what? Man, man, hey, man. Everybody got to have, everybody got to pay their bills. Everybody got to work on Saturday. They mock you. Man, you're silly, man. You want to be off for that day? The Bible was back then. This is today. Just come in early. Just, yeah, just, you know, just, just come in early, man. You get off early. Anything to keep you from doing God's will. Anything. Come on. They mock in, in our Sabbaths. Come on. Verse 8. Jerusalem have grievously said. Jerusalem have grievously, grievously said, read. Ascend. Come on. Therefore, she is removed. Therefore, she is what? Removed. You see that? So when we, when we sin, we are removed at our homeland. When we sin, we are we the our inheritance is taken away. Our heritage is taken away when we sin. That's why right now today we got brothers and sisters here in America, they don't know who they are. The ox do of its owners, the ass is master crib, but Israel do of not know. My people don't even consider. We don't consider that we God's people. We don't consider that we came over in slave ships for punishment. We are sitting up here, brothers got charges, challenges. BNCs, uh, 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 BMWs, uh, them, them new cars, I can't even name them damn things. They, they got, they got them damn things, and they do what? They don't know what? They forget that we in captivity. Hmm? They forget that we in captivity. Watch this, read it one time for me, officer. Uh, verse 8. Verse 8. Jerusalem have grievously said. But Jerusalem has grievously said. Therefore she is removed. Read. All that honored her despise her. Read. Because they have seen her nakedness. You want, yeah. you want seven again? Or no, hey, okay. keep on going. Because they have seen her nakedness. Yea, she sighed and turneth backward. So you see that they said Jerusalem have grievously said. Therefore she is removed. All that honor her despise her. So we sin, and the people that, that we thought that we sinned it for, the people that we wanted to be like, that we sinned it for, they did what? They did not take up for us. They was not our friends. We found out those people ain't our friends. They mocked us. Come on, verse 9. Verse 9. Her filthiness is in her skirts. Her filthiness is in her skirts. She remembered not her last end. Agreed. Therefore, she came down wonderfully. 
she had no comfort. O oh Lord, behold my affliction, for the enemy have magnified himself. So it says we came down wonderful. We came down so wonderful. Give me hold that real quick. Give me Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 28 and start with 48. Yeah, let's start with 48. It says she came down wonderful. Watch this. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 48. Read. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies. Therefore shall we serve our enemies. Watch this. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Uh-huh. In hunger. In hunger. And in thirst. And her thirst. And in nakedness. And nakedness. And in want of all things. Watch this. And he, and he, that enemy, shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed See thee. See that same enemy did all his things. He put a yoke of iron on your neck until he had destroyed you. But watch this. Keep on going. Watch this. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. Now he's going to explain to them who this nation is. Read. From the end of the earth. From the end of the earth. As swift as the eagle flies. See, he gave you a clue right there. He's letting you know that this nation is going to have a symbol of an eagle. But watch this. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. And see, when we got over here, we didn't understand English. Some of y'all, yeah, some of y'all try to do y'all best to speak proper English, but this is not our language. When we came over here, he said that we weren't going to understand this language. But watch this, though. Read. Here it goes. A nation of fierce countenance. These people was fierce. They was evil, bad as hell. But watch this. Which shall not regard the person of the old. They didn't regard the persons of the old because back then they was killing, hanging the old. Read. They were so favor to the young. Wasn't the young in the fields back then? Wasn't they using our babies as alligator bait? Wasn't our babies in the field at three, four, five, six, seven years old? Picking cotton, picking cotton right along beside us. Our babies was right there. Do me a favor, I was go up to uh uh 41. Watch this. Do, uh, Deuteronomy 28 and verse 41. Watch this. Thou shalt be got sons and daughters. But see, the Bible says we're going to have sons and daughters, but watch this. But thou shalt not enjoy them. Because they right there working right beside us. For they shall go into captivity. They was in the fields just like we was. So go back to Deuteronomy 28 49. One more time. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 49. Read. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. Come on. From the end of the earth. Uh -huh. As swift as the eagle flyeth. Agreed. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Come on. A nation of fierce countenance. The nation of fierce countenance. Which shall not regard the person of the old. Agreed. Nor show favor to the young. Come on. And he shall eat up. Oh, I'm sorry. And he shall not regard the person of the old. Nor show favor to the young. We just gave you an example of that, right? So let's go back. Let's go back, officer, to where we was. Uh, go back. Let's go back to where we was. Uh, where was we at before that? Was it Lamentations? No, Lamentations. Yep. Let's go back to Lamentations. One. And we was at verse nine. What? Or verse ten? Which one? We was at verse. Uh, we just got done. We was at verse ten. Yeah. Verse 10. Lamentations 1 and verse 10. The book of Lamentations, chapter 1, verse 10. Read. The adversary has spread out his hand upon all her pleasant things. Read. For she has seen the heathen entered into her sanctuary. Hold on, hold on. She has seen the what? The heathen enter into her sanctuary. Come on. Whom thou did, didst command that they should not enter into thy congregation. You see, God already commanded for the heathen not to enter into our con uh, congregation. Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 2. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 2. Uh -huh. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Read. Thou shalt make no covenant with them. See, God already told us. This is just not the Africans right here he's talking about. The so-called Africans. These are not just the Hamites he's talking about. 
He's talking about all nations right here. Thou shalt not make no covenant with them. Watch this. Nor show mercy unto them. Nor show mercy unto them. Neither will you show mercy unto them. Come on. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter shall not shall not give unto his sons, nor his daughter no, shall that's, not that's all I wanted. Go back now and read that where he should not make covenant with them. That's what I want right there. Read that point right there. Thou shalt make no covenant with them. See, God told us off the top. Don't make no covenant with these nations. But go back to Lamentations 1 and 10 one more time. Watch this. Watch what happens here. This is what the Lamentation chapter 1 and verse 10. Watch this. Read. The adversary has spread out his hand upon that, all her pleasant things. Read. For she has seen that the heathen entered into her sanctuary. She has seen that the heathen have entered into the sanctuary. Read. Whom thou didst command that they should not enter into thy congregation. God already told you, do not make no covenant with them. He told you that. Let's get some more on that. Give me, give me uh, Deuteronomy 23. Let's go to the famous... Hebrew Israelite scripture. Deuteronomy 23. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23, and verse 1. Uh -huh. He that is wounded within the stones, or have his prick. 23 and 7. Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 7. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite. And thou shalt not abhor an Edomite. For he is thy brother. Greed. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian. Because thou was a stranger in this land. So the Edomite is Esau. Everybody understand that? When you read Genesis, give me that, just to make it clear. Give me that Genesis chapter uh, 20, uh, what is that, Genesis 25? Mm -hmm. And give me Genesis 25 and 27 where he ate the, uh, where his name changed. The book of Genesis. No, give me 25 and 25. First came out red. The book of Genesis chapter 25 and verse 25. Watch this. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. And what was his name? And they called his name Esau. Now jump down to where it, it says he ate the pottage. What is it, 28, 29? 30. 30, give me that. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with the same red pottage, for I am faint. Read. Therefore was his name called Edom. You see that now? Let's go back over here to where Deuteronomy 23. So Esau's name was called what? Edom. Edom. But I watch this. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 23 and 7. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 7. Three. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, meaning you should not hate an Edomite. Y'all see that, right? Read. For he is thy brother. For he is thy brother. And thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian. Because thou was a stranger in his land. Because thou was a stranger in his land. Now let's get the, we, we right now we, we concentrate on Edom, right? Now watch what God says about Edom. Uh, give me, give me, uh, give me Hebrews. That's what I want. I'm trying to remember where I was going at. Hebrews. Chapter 12, verse 16, please. The book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 16. Now, God says, you should not abhor an Edomite. But watch this. You remember God said this, right? Now, watch this. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Come on. For ye know how that afterwards he would have inherited the blessings. He would have inherited the blessings. He was rejected. He was rejected not by men, but by God. Watch this. For he found no place of repentance. He found no place of The Edomites cannot repent. Read. Though he saw it carefully with tears. Don't cry. Cry. Come on. For ye are not come in, unto the mount that might be touched. And no, hold on. For he saw it carefully oh, with tears. Uh, for ye know the how afterwards. Oh, that's me. That's my fault. Though he saw it carefully with tears. So he cried, right? Romans. You know what I want? Romans 9. So God said he couldn't repent. Now watch this. The book of Romans chapter 9 and verse 13. This is what it means to hate your brother. Watch. Because when God does it, it's what? It's, right. it's righteous. Read <laughs> what it means. 
As it is written. As it is written. Jacob have I loved. He said, Jacob have I loved. But Esau have I hated. You see that right there? God let you know right off the top that Esau, he hated. So when you go back, go back. Esau is Edom. So when you go back to, let's go back to Deuteronomy 23. Verse 7 again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23, and verse 7. If thou shalt not abhor an Edomite. Thou shalt not hate an Edomite. For he is thy brother. He's thy brother. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian. Because thou was a stranger in his land. And so you see that. So what, what, the, what, the God, what did God say continue in the New Testament? God said, for Jacob I love and Esau I love what? That you see. So when brothers read that scripture, that's, that's kind of backwards. You're reading that with no understanding. That was said at that time, at that moment. But shortly after that, that thing changed, didn't it? So, it, 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 he said, thou shalt not hate. Oh, no, read it one more time. I'm sorry. Read it one more time. Thou shalt, thou shalt not abhor an Edomite. So God said we shouldn't hate a Edomite, right? Today, right along, what did God say in Romans 12 and uh, 18? Get that from. This is the book of Romans, chapter 12, and verse 18. Read. It will be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Read it again. It will be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. With all men. So God said, live peaceably with all men. So right now, today, we should not hate our what? Edomite. We should not eat no Edomites. Watch this. Read the next verse. Here we go. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, and then him. read. If he thirst, give him drink. This is not talking about them. Come on, read. For in doing so, thou shalt. No, be. you skipped the whole verse, soldier. Oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. Read, yeah. read, read, uh, uh, read the verse to be for that again. Uh, 18. 18. If it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. And live peaceably with all men. Watch this. Dearly beloved, avenge, avenge not yourself. So God told you don't avenge yourself, but watch this. But rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, vengeance, vengeance is mine. I will repay, said the Lord. You see that thing right there? So we still, we still, we don't post to hate him because vengeance is God's. We don't gotta hate him, but we ain't gotta give. We ain't gotta uh, sit around and have no conversation. We ain't gotta pay no golf with him, but we're not supposed to hate him. We're not supposed to shoot him, beat him up, or none of that. Unless they violate, they violate your space. That's why God said, "Live with all men, impossible." So no, no one's saying we practicing that. But but when brothers use that Deuteronomy twenty three and seven. They're using that ignorantly. Because God said he hated them. In the New and Old Testament. So now I'm from her. Let's go back to First Chronicles. 16. And. I think we had 15. The book of First Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 15. Watch this. Be ye mindful always of his covenant. Be ye mindful of always. Hold on real quick. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, soldier. I'm sorry. Be ye mindful always of his covenant. Be ye mindful of always of his covenant. Watch this. The word with he, which he commanded to a thousand generations, even of the covenant which he made with Abraham, and of his oath with I. So he, he commanded this covenant to a thousand of generations. Thousands of generations. That's why you have Esau saying the earth is a million years old. See, that's gone away now. No, the earth is not a million years old. You cannot like you cannot open no brick and say or or, or or a piece of wood and say, "Oh, this tree was here three million years." I can tell you about the layers. Yeah, okay. All righty then. <laughs> All righty then. Read sixteen again. First Chronicles sixteen and verse sixteen. 
even of the covenant which he made with Abraham and of his oath with Isaac, and hath confirmed the same to Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. For Israel for an everlasting what? Covenant. Read. Saying unto thee will I give the land of Canaan, and the lot of your inheritance. When ye were but few, even a few, and strangers in it, and when they went from nation to nation and from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. He suffered no man to do them what? Wrong. He suffered no man to do them wrong. Give me, uh, keep on going, read. Yea, he reproved kings for their sake. And watch this. Saying, touch not my anointed. What did God say? Touch not my anointed. Read. And do my prophets no harm. Right, so God so told us, touch not. He told him, touch not his anointed ones. And do his prophets no wrong. Uh, give me one second real quick. Let me look at something, please. All right, give me Judah chapter uh, 5, verse 20, please. The book of Judah, chapter chapter 5, and verse 20. Now, therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people, and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin. That this shall be their what? Ruin. Three. And let us go up, and we shall overcome them. Mm hmm but if there be no iniquity found in this in their nation, and so there be no sin in these people, let my Lord now pass by. Y'all see how important it is for us not to be sinners in this congregation. Right. Y'all see how important it is because when we as in the midst of sins, guys, the devil can still come in. But when you are not in sin, God is going to what protect you. That's for just not for this congregation. That's for all the congregations of Israel that's out here right now trying to wake up our people. That's for all of us. Sin cannot be in the body. You can't come to congregate just to party. You can't come to congregate just for fun. You're trying to meet friends. You want to hang out. You're trying to meet your women so you get a little woo-woo. You can't do that. This is not the place for that. That's right. This is the place to come to learn. You're supposed to be here to learn. Learn to get saved. That's what we're here for. Uh, read it one more time. 21. Verse 21. But if there be no iniquity... Excuse me, but if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by. Let the Lord pass by. Lest their Lord defend them. Uh huh. And their God before them. Uh huh. And we become a reproach before all the world. Because see, God will kill other nations for you. He'll kill other nations for you. Hold on, real quick. With that being said, uh, where is it? What's that? Give me one second, give me one second, I got you. All right, give me, uh, give me Zechariah 14 and score with two, please. I want two and three, sir. The book of Zechariah, chapter 14, verse two. Story 14 and one. 14 and verse one. Uh-huh, that's what I want. Behold the day of the Lord coming. Behold the day of the Lord coming. Watch this. And thy spoils shall be divided in the midst of thee. And thy spoils shall be divided in the midst of thee. Watch this. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. Read. And the city shall be taken. Uh -huh. And the houses rifled. And the women ravished. And half the city shall go forth into captivity. And the rest of the, world, the people shall not be cut off from the city. Watch this. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. You see that God will go forth and fight against those nations. When you're doing his laws. That's why today's class is that fear is a must. You got to fear. You got to. Some people ask you, man. 
some of the people ask you, man, hey, why should I be scared of God? Did he create you? That means he can destroy you. That's right. <laughs> you hear black folks all the time. Black folks is the only ones came up with this saying right here. I brought you in this world. I'll take you out. Where do you think they got it from? They got it from their father, which is God. You don't want to do what I say? You go. You know, them, them, them things where you feel good. You know, something bad always happens when you feel real good. You got to watch it. You know, these people be great. Go to the club. They, they got their clothes on. They got their little outfit on. They smell good. They got their high heels on. The women, the dudes got these uh, the Gucci belts on. Whatever. They got they got the Gucci belts on with they tight, uh, with they tight, uh, what they call skinny uh, jeans. They got the skinny, skinny jeans on. They, they feeling good. They got their cologne on. Cost about $300, right? They step outside the bus. You know, right here and get in their car. Hey, where the bus come from? It's God. God is the bus. You better watch it. Because it can happen to any one of us. I remember on Broadway, right there on 26, I mean 26, right there, the little chick was at the club at night and she got hit by the car. I still remember that night. She got hit by the car and drug all the way down the street. Out there just enjoying herself. Call herself and join herself, but guess what? At that time, I went into truth, so I didn't understand, you know, like, damn, she was just out trying to have fun, but she was on Sabbath night. You know, if you if you look at it, a lot of black folks died between Friday and Sunday. I'm not saying they don't die through the week, but a lot of people died between Friday and Sunday. Friday and Sunday, uh, I mean, Saturday night, that's what I'm saying. A lot of people. They don't even think about it. They don't add it up. At the club, you remember that black girl got shot? Mm -hmm. The girl, black girl got shot because of the bartender. The, the bar, I mean, she, what? She, she was the bartender. She was the bartender. Mm -hmm. The dude was in the club. So she, she, he posted a shot of a friend or something. So she hit him with a bottle, champagne bottle. She went back to hit that dude again and got smoked. Taken up for somebody that is already what? Then you gotta let the courts handle these things, man. Now your family's mourning because you try to take things in your own hand. When did that happen, officers? Saturday, what? Woo, Saturday night after Saturday. Woo, out partying, party hardy. Derby. Derby. Yep. Y'all people don't even realize these things. I was right out there with him. I'm so glad God had a had a plan for me, man. I can see myself right now, the age I am right now, I'm still be in the club with some Jordans on, little necklace on my neck, I still think I'm cool or something, you know what I'm saying? I'll be stepping down, I'll be dancing, you know, I'm just playing, I'm just, <laughs> I ain't gonna, I was, I was in my prayer, you know, well, I'm just letting y'all know, I'm glad that God didn't give me that choice, real talk, I'm glad God didn't give y'all that choice, because any of us could be doing anything right now on Saturday, uh, right now afternoon. Brothers could be brothers and sisters could be going out to a movie. We'd be thinking that we're doing something good, right? We'd be going out to a movie. We could be uh, uh we could be uh taking a walk with the children, picking up some ice cream. What's wrong with that? There's something really wrong with that. Because give me that uh give me that Isaiah 58. I forgot you ain't read. Give me that Isaiah 58 13, please. Hold on real quick. Let me see do I want fail with or do I want the root? Give me one second. I might want <laughs> Read that one and then give me 56 and 2. 50, uh, 50, uh, 8, 13, then give me 56 and 2. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 58, verse 13. Read, watch this. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasures on my holy day, and yeah. all the Sabbath of delight, uh -huh. the holy of the Lord, the holy of the Lord, honorable, uh -huh. and shall honor him, not doing, not doing thy own ways, not doing thy own ways, nor finding thy own pleasure, Read. nor speaking thy own word. Uh huh. 
So, yeah. so if we if we if we if we follow God and we do this Sabbath and not do our own pleasure, because we'll be out there just doing our own pleasure and we think we ain't doing what? Wow. We think we ain't doing nothing wrong. I ain't robbing nobody, I ain't killing nobody, but you're breaking the Sabbath. That's the most important rule that you that you, that you forgot about. Now go to 56 and 2. Deuteronomy chapter 56 and verse 2. Watch this. Blessed is the man that doeth this. Blessed is the man that doeth this. Watch this. And the son of man that layeth hold on. Come on. And keepeth the Sabbath from pollution. Just keep the what? Keepeth the Sabbath from pollution. So blessed is the man that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it. Watch this. And keepeth his hand from doing any evil. So you keep your hands from doing any evil on God's Sabbath day. Blessed is that man. Let's go. Where was we at before that? Oh, uh, we do with that. We do with that. Give me Ezekiel chapter 23, verse 45. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 23, and verse 45. Read. And the righteous men, they shall judge them after the manner of, a, manner of adulteress, adulteresses and after the manner of women that shed blood, because, because they are adulteresses. And the blood is in their hand. Hold on, hold on. Let me get there one more time. I want to read that one more time. Let's, let's read it one more time and down. Ezekiel, chapter 23, and verse 45. Watch this. And the righteous men, they shall judge them after the manner of, of adulterers. So a righteous man is going to judge a man after the manner of adulterers. Watch this. And after the manner of women that shed blood. And after the manner of... Because you got to remember something, guys. If a... We're going to give you the laws on these, though. If a man shed blood, what's the law for a man if he shed blood? What's the law? His, his blood should be shed. So it's death, right? Alright, so what's that law for the woman that shed blood? It's what? It's no difference, man. Oh my goodness, we should have answered that right away. Because man, the woman was made from the what? So all the laws come to the man and they go under the man. Christ is the head of man. Man is the head of what? So whatever law we got, the woman got the same what? Same law. So read it one more time. Ezekiel chapter 23 verse 25. Uh -huh. And the righteous men, they shall judge them after the manner of adulteresses read. and after the manner of women that shed blood read. because they are adulteresses. Because they are what? Adulteresses. Read. And blood is in their hands. What happens, what happens sisters? I'm going to ask y'all sisters a question. What happens if you commit adultery on your husband? Can you just give me a give me an answer? What, what happens? Death. What happens? Death. I just want him to hear it so y'all can know. So now y'all understand, right? So if you commit adultery as adultery as a woman, that's death if you don't what? Repent. But you can't be with no other man after that. I'll praise this sister Victoria. Sister Victoria is the spirit. That's right. Death. Because I'm gonna tell you something. If you cheat on that man, you think you're gonna you think you're gonna be single. If you know that death is your penalty for cheating on your husband, are you gonna be single after you cheat on your husband? Be real. Hey yeah. no. You if you knew the judgment was death to you and you did it. What's going to stop you from doing anything else? Now all of a sudden you're going to look, you're going to sit over like a, a, a church mouse, real quiet. You're not. Really? I mean, not really again. Give me Leviticus chapter 20, verse 10. Watch this. We're going to go to the law. The book of Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 10. Three. Watch this. And the man that committed adultery with another man's wife. Even he that committed adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. I hope that wound is good enough for you. I hope that's the best wound you had in your life. 
Like the, what's his name back in the day? Uh, the, the guy used to say, Can you woo 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 woo? What was his name? Uh, anybody, anybody remember his name? <laughs> anybody remember his name? Uh, Jeff, Jeffrey, o Je is it Jeffrey? Uh, Jeffrey Osborne, was it him? Uh, something like that. I hope that woo 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 is good. Can you woo 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 woo? I hope that's the best woo 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 you had in your life. Because read it again, soldier. Come on, one more time. And the man that committed adultery with another man's wife, even he that committed adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. You know why? Because women always think that they innocent. I, I just slipped up. No, God says your head is cut off. God says you're going to burn. I I just made a mistake one time. No, you 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 made a mistake one time in physical, but in your mind many times. That's why Christ says, if a man look upon a woman to lust after her, that's talking about a woman too, looking upon the man to lust after. Her. You are committed adultery in your head already. You already did it, thing. That's why these brothers sitting around eagerly talking about multiple wives. You can't even look on a woman, another woman when you marry. You look on another woman talking about, I want to marry you. That means you want some nookie. If you want some nookie, it means you put to death. You adulteress. Adultery. Adulteress. Oh, no, it's adulterer. Adulterer. I'm <laughs> sorry. Damn, I messed that all way up. But you know what I'm saying? Y'all got it? So you cannot have multiple wives. Because once you marry, if you look up another, another woman, you say, ooh, 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 ooh. Boy, you look good. You won't be my wife. You already committed adultery. What about the wife you got over here? What happened to her? You looked upon another what? Woman. We got the whole class coming. Don't worry about it. We got it coming very soon. We got it coming on be on YouTube very soon. So now that's the law on that for Mary to be Leviticus chapter 24, verse 17. Watch this. We ain't done yet. We write these down, brothers and sisters. So now this goes into a, a woman. I mean a, a killing. Come on. The book of Leviticus chapter 24, verse 17. Uh-huh. And he that killeth any man shall surely be put to death. Hold on. Hold on. What the Bible say right there, bro? And he that killeth any man. You notice it says he. 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 Anybody. He that killeth any man. Read. Shall surely be put to death. He, you, shall be woman. Man shall be surely put to what? Death. Put to death. You're going to be put to death. There's no if, ands, and back to it. Now, from her, give me... Go back to Ezekiel 45. One more time. Ezekiel 23, 45. The book of Ezekiel chapter 23 and verse 45. Uh -huh. And the righteous men, they shall judge them after the manner of adultery. You know what it says, and the righteous man, the righteous man should judge them. The righteous man should judge them. We already went through what a righteous man is, right? A righteous man is a man that's keeping God's commandments. How is a brother that's not keeping God's commandments going to judge anybody? Read it again. And the righteous men, they shall judge them after the manner of adulteries. Uh, after the manner of adulteries. But meaning, when you judge them, you're judging them to get them put to what? Yeah. Watch this. And after the manner of women that shed blood, a killer, because they are adulteresses, the blood is in their hands. And the blood is in their hands. The blood is in their hands. So, from her, let's jump to Numbers chapter 15, verse 38, please. The book of Numbers chapter 15, and verse 38. Watch this. Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. Hold on real quick, before I jump. 
before I jump and miss something. That's what I was missing. Give me Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 39. I knew it was something. I was missing something. My fault. Before we jump there, give me Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 39. I knew I was missing something. Watch this. The book of Ezekiel chapter 16, and verse 39. Here we go. And I will also give thee into their hands, and they shall throw down thy imminent place, and they shall break down thy high places, and they shall strip thee also of thy clothes, and they shall take thy fair, and they shall take thy fair jewels. And leave thee naked and bare. So they should take your beautiful jewels and leave you what? Naked and bare. So read it one more time. And I will also give thee into their hands, and they shall throw down thy imminent place, and shall break down thy high places, and they shall strip thee also of thy clothes, and they shall take thy fair jewels and leave thee naked and bare. Now watch you 37 real quick. Verse 37. Here you go. Behold, therefore, I will gather all thy lovers. I will gather all your lovers. With whom thou hast taken pleasure. Who you love. And all them that hast loved. With all the men that thou hast hated. All the men that thou, thou hast hated, read. I, I will eat, even gather them round about against thee. Read against you. And will discover thy nakedness. You'll see it. Them. And you'll see it. Come on. That they shall see all thy nakedness. And they shall see all that see. So now maybe when it goes down to 39, I will also give thee unto their hands. And they shall throw down that imminent, imminent, what's that what? Imminent. Imminent place. And shall break down the high places. They shall strip thee also of thy clothes. So when we came over here to Margo, what happened? Came over to naked. Did we have our garments anymore? Mm -hmm. They stripped the buzz out what? Garments. Watch this real quick. Give me Numbers chapter 15, 38. The book of Numbers chapter 15 and verse 38. Watch this. Speak unto the children of Israel. Speak unto the children of Israel. And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments uh -huh. throughout their generation. Uh -huh. And that they put upon the fringe at the borders of a, a ribbon of blue. This is why it's very important that you follow God's laws. Is that it? Yes, that's the same. All right. Go ahead, 39. Verse 39. And it shall be unto you for a friend. This is the key point right here. Listen up. Here it comes. That ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. Why is the friend just more brothers to, to do what? Remind, so it reminds us of the commandments. It reminds us of God's laws, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So now when God said right here in 39, it said God, he let these nations strip us of our clothing, right? What happened when we came in captivity? Our people right now today, they cannot look down and remember God's what? Remember the Lord. Wow. That was meant to be. They was promised here to be put to what? Yeah. Because he made them forget. He made them forget. Now watch this. We read numbers 20. Are you doing 39? Is that it? Uh, it's a bit Go ahead. And that they seek not after their own heart and your own eyes, and after after which you used to go a whore. See, because without God's fringes, you lean it into your own what? Understand. You lean into your own understanding. Without God's fringes, you lean it into your own understanding. Now watch this. Give me Zephaniah 1 and 8, please. Without God's fringes, you, you lean into your own understanding. Give me Zephaniah 1 and 8. Watch it. The book of Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 8. Come on. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children. The princes and the king's children. Watch this. And all such as are clothed with strange apparel. So he's going to punish them in these days when he comes back. He's going to punish all them as clothed in what? So what happened is Jeremiah 17 and 4, please. What happened was this. Watch this. I hope I ain't lost nobody. Is everybody with me? Is everybody understanding where we're going at? Alright, watch this. Here we go. I'm explaining to you right now what happens when we lost just the simple commandment of not wearing our fringes, the fear of the Lord. It's fear of the Lord is a, is a must. So when we lost wearing our fringes, we couldn't fear God. And it was meant to be. We were set up that way. He set it up that way. Because two-thirds of Israel must what? Die. Die. 
Read what you get. Watch this. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, and verse 4. Read. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. So we say, thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from that heritage that God gave us. He's letting Jeremiah know that you're going to discontinue, but I'm going to wake you back up. But sorry for the rest of those brothers. Sorry, Charlie, for the rest of them. Read it again. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine inheritance that I gave thee. Uh huh. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. Thou shalt serve thy enemies in the land thou knowest not. Watch this. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger. So watch this, real quick. Give me proof. We're going we to come back to that. I hold that right there because I want that one more time because I got something to add to it. Give me proof. Chapter 3. Eight verse eight. Watch this. Eight, and then I want you to jump to ten. The book of Baruch, chapter three, and verse eight. Read. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. The Bible says we yet this day in our captivity. Right here, right now, two thousand and twenty-one. Some of you Negroes think you free. You not free, brothers and sisters. You are in your captivity. Every morning you got to get up and you got to go serve another man. Another nation. You got to go buy your food from another nation. You got to go buy your water, your drink, your clothing for another nation. You should see this. Every day we're going to serve our enemies. Read it one more time, soldier. Watch this. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. We're still in captivity right now today. Come on. Where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse. See, we are here for disapproval. We're here because we disapprove. Of what God's laws and God disapproved our sin. So the curse was put upon us. Read. And to be subject to payments. We subject to payments. That's why every time you look up, it's a bill, dude. It's a bill, dude. Every time you look up, it's horrible. Read. According to all the iniquities of our fathers. According to what our forefathers did. Read. Which departed from the Lord our God. Which departed. Jump to verse 10. Watch this. Verse 10. How happened it, Israel? That thou art in thy enemy's land. How did it happen that you are in your enemy's land, Israel? How did this happen? Read. That thou art waxing old. That we are growing old. In a strange country. We see we still in a strange country. This is not your home. You, Some of you brothers in the truth, you keep forgetting you're not at home. You are just relaxed. And you just relax as the ones who sleep. You're not at home. You're not here working. You're not trying to get out on these streets. You're not trying to wake up the people. You just want to sit around and scratch your butt all day long. That's right. Get on the computer. I'm an Israelite. I'm a black Hebrew. I'm a black Hebrew Israelite. Like that's going to wake somebody up. I'm on the computer. I'm walking. I'm looking at you. You crazy. The Lord has smitten us with madness. Read it again, man. How happy it, Israel, that thou art in thy enemy's land, that thou art waxing old in a strange country. See, we still in a strange country. Watch this. Hold on. That's what I hear. It just, just came to my head. Give me. We, we waxing old in a strange country because our people don't understand this. Give me that Michael 2 and 8, please. We waxing old in a strange country. Watch it. Give me a mic of 20. Is that what I want? To a 10. Come on. Thank you, soldier. Micah chapter 2 and verse 10. Read. Arise and depart, for this is not your rest. See, God told us to arise. Get your butt up. Quit scratching. Depart from off that damn couch. This is not your rest. Read. Because it is polluted. Because it's what? It is polluted. Why is brothers here trying to sleep all damn day in a polluted land? I bet you if you was if you had a bedroom suit surrounded in acid, your ass wouldn't sleep all day. You would be up trying to see. Damn, is it getting closer? Is it you wouldn't be able to sleep? Because you scared and then the acid gonna burn you up. Oh. Read it again. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. This is not your rest, Israel. Read. 
Because it is polluted. Because it's polluted. Greed. It shall destroy you. It's going to destroy you. Let's go back to Baruch. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, and verse 10. Greed. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Come on. How happened it, Israel? How happened it, Israel? That thou art in thy enemy's land. Read. That thou art waxing old in a strange country. Read. That thou art defiled with the dead. We are defiled with the dead. Meaning we are mingled with the people who are what? Spiritually dead. Spiritually dead. We are mingled with nations who don't have no God. That's what we are. Where was we at when we went in first, please? You know I went I went off right there. Huh? Zephaniah, right? Yes. Zephaniah 1. Zephaniah 1 and 8, please. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 1 and verse 8. Come on. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. In the day of the Lord's sacrifice, watch this. That I will punish the princes and the king's children. Because God refused to put these laws back in your mind. I will punish the king and the chief, king's children. Read. And all such as are clothed with strange apparel. All those are clothed with strange apparel. All those are clothed with strange apparel. So God says he's going to punish everybody that is clothed with strange apparel. See, people go up to church on Sunday and they got a wet on. They got a suit. No friends. No what? No friends. They got a suit with no fringes. But they think they sob as hell, right? Yep. Your suit might you might look pretty nice in your suit, right? But you got you ain't got no fringes on it. So your suit might just, just might as well be stinky, funky. You might as well just have drawers on. See what I mean? Read it one more time, so just so they can get it. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. It shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. Watch it. That I will punish the princes and the king's children. The princes and the chief, king's children. Watch this. And all such as are clothed with strange apparel. All them is clothed with strange apparel. So all that, all that glory, glory, hallelujah, all that singing, you going to burn up. You're going to burn up. Because y'all refuse to hear God's what? Laws. You refuse to fear God. Y'all brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell y'all something, man. Y'all best believe, man, God is watching us. He's watching every move you make. He knows every thought that you're going to make. Christ knows what you're thinking before you know. Oh, yeah, I know, boy. I really knew where you was going. I don't know if some of y'all ever been teaching before. And you you get to a hard spot, and all of a sudden Christ popped that scripture in your head. All of a sudden, boom, it's in your head because he know where you need. He know he know what you need. He know where you was going. At. See what I mean? Let's go back, guys. Let's go back to give me Psalms one one eleven and ten. Watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 111 and verse 10. Read. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. See, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And good understanding have all they that do his commandments. See, if you do his commandments, you will have a good understanding. You have a good understanding if you do God's commandments. Hold on real quick, let me see something. Also help me out on that. See, uh, break it down. Read that one more time, bro. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It says the fear of the Lord, the keeping of God's commandments, is the beginning of wisdom. Read. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. So, in order to get this understanding, you must be keeping God's law, statutes, and commandments. In order to get that understanding, you got to be doing those things because that is the beginning of the wisdom. 
In order to get that the understanding of that wisdom, you must be keeping God's law, statutes, and commandments. It says, you read it, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Read. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Alright, go to uh, go to Job. chapter 28 verse 28 and unto man he said behold the fear of the Lord that is wisdom he said the fear of the Lord that is wisdom and to depart from evil is understanding so to depart from evil is understanding so keeping God's laws you are departing from evil that is understanding that's where you get your understanding from why is that because when you depart from evil you begin to even you you keeping God's commandments. You begin to you begin to get this understanding. Things begin to open up for you. Your your mindset begins to open up because you're not simple minded no more. These laws make you wise. I'll pray. I'll pray. How do oh, God. Yeah, yeah. I got you. I'm back. I'll pray. I'll pray. All right. So Proverbs. Give me Proverbs six and twenty three. That's what I want. Because we've been talking a little bit about adultery, right? So this is this is what popped in my mind. Read Psalms 111 and 10 again. Off the back of what officer was saying, and then we watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 111 and 10. Read. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So when you fear God, that's when you become wise. Like the officer said, you become wise once you start doing the commandments. Watch this. A good understanding of all they that do his commandments. You're going to understand not to do certain things. But watch this. Give me Proverbs 6 and 23. Watch this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6 and, and verse, verse 28, 28, 28. Verse 28. Can one go upon hot coals? No. Proverbs 6 and you right. You are right. I am wrong. Proverbs 6 and 32. I'm sorry, soldier. I, I hit it backwards. Proverbs 6 and verse 32. Read. But whoso committed adultery with a woman. Whosoever committed adultery with a woman. Lacketh understanding. You lack understanding. So you're not fearing God. You're not fearing God. You're going to lack understanding if you commit adultery with a woman. You can't sit up here and tell me. Oh, shoot. Hold on real quick. There you go. Move that paint. Move those. Move those. Sorry, guys. Give me one second, guys. All right. All right. Read it one more time. I'm sorry. But whoso committed adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. So if you commit adultery with a woman, you can you you lack understanding. Watch this. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. You see that? You don't even understand that you're going to get put to what? Yeah. But our brothers and sisters, for a quick, for a quick one, we sure will. You know what? God ain't go. God ain't go. He ain't gonna remember. He ain't gonna remember. Watch what God says about you not remembering. Give me a please ask cuss. Give me a please ask us real quick. Let me get to it. Uh. Twenty-three and eighteen. Watch this. This is a. This is what. This is people that says God will forget. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter twenty-three and verse eighteen. A man that breaketh wedlock. So if a man breaketh wedlock, because this is what we're talking about right now. Watch this. Say, thus in his heart, who seeth me? Who go see me? I am compassed about with dark. It's dark time. I'm creeping. Watch this. And the walls cover me. And the walls cover me. Come on. And nobody seeth me. Nobody see. I got no shadow. Read. What need I to fear? What need do I to fear? Watch this. The most high will not remember my sin. That's what I wanted right there. The most high will not remember my sin. But watch this. Such a man only fears the eyes of men. And know if not the eyes of the Lord are ten thousand times brighter than the sun. Beholding all the ways of men and considering the most secret parts. So that man right there, he don't fear God. He fear what? Man. He fear men. So right here, God says, 
The most high will not remember. My, God's going to remember every bit of that sin, brother. He's going to remember every bit of it. You must watch yourself. Now let's go back to 32. I mean, Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 32. But whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. So when you commit adultery with a woman, you lack understanding. Come on. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. So a man that doeth destroys his own soul. Brothers, listen to me. And I say this. Do not go outside your woman. That's right. Real talk. You women, do not go outside your men. You will pay, you will pay the ultimate punishment. That's real. Don't try to be a player because you're gonna try to ice skate on some skates you don't know how to you don't, you're gonna try to ice skate and don't know how to skate on ice. What happens? You slip and fall on your what? You slip and fall on your behind. Well, slippers count. It is true. Everybody got that? All right, let's go back. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I ain't heard nothing. Do everybody got that? That's right. All right. Let's go back. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 1. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 26 and verse 1. Read. Blessed is the man that hath a virtuous wife. Blessed is that man that got that virtuous wife. Your wife's cool. She cleans. She does all these things, right? That's right. So it said, Blessed is that woman. Don't get too happy too quick, soldier. Because it's, <laughs> it's a, see, yeah, you on that motorcycle. I told you, the officer stay on it. Watch this. Read it again. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> read, read it again. Come on. Blessed is the man that hath a virtuous wife. All right, I, we give all praises to the virtuous wife. Let's give it up to the virtuous wife, y'all. Give it all praises to the All right. All right. Now let's see where we can wait for it. Three. For the number of his days shall be doubled. Why is your number of days going to be doubled? Because a woman that is a virtuous wife, she will cause you no harm. Meaning, she will never, you will never have to get upset and angry with her. If you never have to get upset and angry with that wife, she's preserving your soul. You know, in this world, I'll praise the most side. I'm going to praise I'll praise the most side. Shalom. Shalom, sis. All right, so you know that if you got a virtuous wife, all praises. But now watch this, though. Where we at? Uh, verse 2. No, hold on real quick. Jump down to verse 5, soldier. That's what I told you. Hold up. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 26 and verse 5. Watch this. Here it goes. There be three things that my heart feared. Greed. And the fourth I was sore afraid. Greed. And the slander of a city. Slander of a city. He's talking about a slander of Israel. People slandering the, is the body of Israel. The the, the, the <laughs> the body of Israel, as I'm putting it. Really. The gathering together of an unruly multitude. Uh, hold on. So he says, a gathering together of an unruly multitude. That's, that's another thing. Watch this. And a false accusation. And a, and a what? False accusation. Some brother bringing up something that is not right. But watch this. All these are worse than death. Yeah, read. Oh, hold on. One more time. Read that bullet point again. All these are worse than death. All these is worse than death, brothers. All these is worse than death. But watch this. But a grief of heart and sorrow is a woman that is jealous over another woman. Read. And a scourge of the tongue which communicated with all. And a scourge of a tongue communicated. So a woman that is jealous over another what? Woman. Ain't that the same thing as a man jealous over another what? Man. See what I mean? So if a woman, a virtual woman, would never make her husband what? Jealous. And a virtual, and a man of God, a righteous man, I was going to say a virtuous man, a righteous man of God, a just man would never make his wife what? See that thing right there? If you're doing that thing, don't call yourself virtuous. And don't call yourself just. You men, don't be just. 
you women don't be virtuous. You got to do what the Bible says do. A woman at home cleaning, uh, cleaning, cooking, vacuuming, do my things that already was ordained by God for our women to do. The women should keep the house. But when a woman loves her husband and don't give him no stress, that's the most beautiful woman there is. Beauty is vain. <clears throat> but her heart, her man, she loves you. Meaning she loves God. Same thing with you brothers. That's why, I, give me a collage real quick. I know I'm going off, but y'all gonna have to wait for it. Hold on, I'm going off. But watch this, Colossians 3 and 19. That's all I want. And then go back. So if you got a beautiful woman and she's not giving you no problems and all that, watch what the Bible says. The book of Colossians chapter 3 and verse 19. Just start with 18 and go 19. Uh, verse 18. Wives, submit yourself unto your own husband. So the Bible says submit yourself to your own husband. Watch this. As it is, as it is fit in the Lord. Read. Husbands, love your wives. Love your wives. And be not bitter. And be not what? Bitter against them. You see, when you love your wife, and your wife love you, a man should never be bitter against his wife. If his wife's not going against him, your wife not cussing you out, your wife ain't calling you a uh, punk, punk A nigga and all that, your wife ain't throwing bottles against your head, you should be not bitter against your wife. Everybody understand it? Yep. Wives love your husband by not making your husband what? Jealous. Give me Ecclesiastes 26 and 13. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26 and verse 13. Read. The grace of a wife delighted her husband. See, the grace of a wife delighted. The, just your wife's appearance. And it delights you. When you see your wife, you're supposed to light up. Be like, damn, her go my baby. You know what I mean? Give me a look, give me, get you a little kiss or whatever. And you happy, right? Watch this. And her discretion. And her what? And her discretion. And her discretion. Will fatten his bones. See, they all know about y'all, but also got a little fat over here. <laughs> oh, oh, my fault. I'm sorry. I forgot. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. my fault. My fault. I'm sorry about her. I mean. <laughs> hey, right. TTIC said it up a little bit high on your chest, brother. Read it one more time, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm gonna leave y'all alone. They gonna be, boy, they gonna try to get on TV and turn me up. Read it again, man. It says the grace of a wife delighted her husband. Come on, and her discretion and her discretion will fatten his bones. Because see, when you ain't got nothing to worry about, you gain weight. That's right. When you ain't worried about your wife or uh, horn, you gain weight. But soon as you soon as you worry about your wife doing something outside of that, you start to what? Get scared. Skinnier, it's skinny. Why do you get skinny, y'all? Stress. Stress. And then guess what? What's guess what goes on with that stress? Death. Death. That's right. Reverse. Reverse. Uh, was it four again? The sorrow or five? Ecclesiastes. It was it five? Or, hold on. Let me get to it. Twenty-six and five. I mean six. That's six. Okay. But a grief of heart and sorrow is a woman that is jealous over another woman and is stern to the tongue which communicated with all. You know why? Because when a woman jealous over another woman, who's going to hear? Is the other woman going to hear? Who's going to hear? You, you, damn sis, calm down sis. Why don't you talk to her? She's not going to talk to the other woman. All the anger, all the frustration, go, unless you got one of the hood rats now. I ain't down. I'm telling you, that the hood rats don't play. She'll be in the girl her. They say, you know, you're in the congregation. They both got uh, they hers color, right? They say, you know, one hers color, weeds going everywhere. Yeah, what the hell is going on in her? I'm sorry, I shouldn't see the hood rats. You know, I know it. I know it. I know it. I shouldn't have said that. Just give me a good word. Give me a good word. Ratchet. Ratchet. That's a good word. Ratchet. 
So these is the things that we got to watch out for. Okay? Everybody understand it? Yeah. All right? So now let's go for a bird. Jump down to 16. I'm sorry. One more. Jump down to 16. The Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 16. Now here it goes. Here it goes. Now this goes back to verse 1. Watch this. As the sun when it arises in the high heaven, Three. so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of her house. See, that's, that's like the sun. You know when the sun rises, you walk, you, hey, I don't know if any of y'all ever sit and watch the sun rise with somebody, but it's a beautiful thing when two people are sitting there, you watching the sun rise, y'all just having a little conversation, you might have a little coffee. If you in my case, when I was younger, you have a little liquor, pull out a little liquor, you know, we just come from the club and watch the sun rise. So I'm just letting you know. So in the, in, in the case that you watch the sun rise, it's beautiful with your, with your, with your mate, right? That's how it feels when you got a godly woman. She's in your heart as the sun rises. She's going to make you feel all warm and cuddly inside. Now, I'm going to tell on some people. Like, when I come over to Herbie's house, he got all pajamas and stuff. You know what He feels all cuddly and warm inside. No, I'm just missing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> all right, from Herb, this is where we at, guys. All right, what was that at? Uh, let me get to it. Go there. Keep on reading. Verse 17, please. Verse 17. Uh -huh. As the clear light is upon the holy candlestick. As the clear light is upon the holy candlestick. Watch this. So is the beauty of the face in ripe age. You see, so is the beauty of the face in ripe age. Because when you love your wife, it don't matter how old she did, she's still what to you? She's still going to be beautiful, man. That's, right. that's, what, that's what you want. The fear of the Lord, you get that virtuous woman. Like, yeah. When you fear God, that's the type of woman. You don't want number five and six. You want one and 16 and 17. You want that type of woman. Where we at? Uh, give me Proverbs 5 and 18. The book of Proverbs, chapter 5, and verse 18. Read. Let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. See, he said, let thy fountains be blessed and rejoice of the wife of thy youth. You know this, now, now we know now in Israel, we married our women and our women was virgins. Uh, whenever you married, the majority of them, right? Was virgin the last day, husband or dad, right? But in these days right here, in this time right here, read it again with these times. Let thy fountain be blessed. Let thy fountain be blessed. And rejoice with the wife of thy youth. And rejoice with the wife of thy, of thy youth. The youth in this truth. You a young man in this truth. Even when you 10, 12, 13, 14 years old, you're still a young man in the truth. You're still learning. I don't care if you're 30 or 40, you're still learning in this truth. But what I'm saying, you're a young man, right? So when you when you get that wife in this truth and y'all come together, y'all young together. Y'all, 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 y'all relationship is young. No more do we got virgins running around. Because you gotta remember, these times is way different than our times. These times, girls is, is at it at 12, 13, 14, 15. We know that it's wrong, but we know that they doing it. So read it again. Let the, let thy, excuse me. <clears throat> Let thy fountains be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. All that being said is that when you find that woman and y'all together, when you find that woman and y'all together, right? You know, some things to exercise is this because I want to, because what I just said was the younger girls is in it. They doing, they having relations out here at a young age, right? So they're not virgins no more when they get to age to marry, right? So, what what is the best thing for us? What's the best situation for us to do right now today to get our women back on track when you're married, woman? While you're courting, what, what would be the good thing to do? Teaching the laws. 
Teacher of the laws. Let's teach her this. Because as y'all courting, you want your woman to be tight and fresh. Excuse my language. I'm not trying to be nasty. I'm just telling you something. Because through these, through these times, our women have been with different men in their life. Give me Esther chapter 2, verse 12. Watch this. So during these times, for a woman to get herself back right, you courting with a woman, and she knows she wants you, even if she don't want you. She got to marry somebody, right? And as a woman is married, take heed to this. Read. The book of Esther, chapter 2 and verse 12. Read. Now when every maid's turn was come to go into, into King Asaurus, after that she had been, had been 12 months, according to the manner of the woman. After she been what? 12 months after the manner of the woman. Watch this. So, so were the days of their purification accomplished. So were the days of their purification accomplished. Watch this. To wit, six months with oil of myrrh. So they soaked six months in the tub with what? Oil and myrrh. Really? Oil of myrrh. And six months with sweet odor. Did they, did they soak in the tub six months with what? Oil and myrrh. Read, read. And six months with sweet odor. Read. And with other things for the purifying of the woman. So while you women is courting, get yourself right. Get yourself right down there. That way when your man comes, all the little activities you dreamed of, y'all can do. Don't no man here want to go past somewhere and sniff something like, what the hell is that? <laughs> y'all see them commercials where y'all see the commercials where they advertise those pills where the man hit the banana and then the banana went uh and then it wasn't there no more. That's what happens when you ain't right. I'm not trying to be nice, I'm just being real. These is the things that we must do. Let's go back. Proverbs 5 and 18 again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 5 and verse 18. Let thy fountain be blessed. Let thy fountain be blessed. And rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Read. Let her be as the loving hind and pleasant robe. Let her be as the loving hind and the pleasant robe. Let her breast satisfy. Let her what? Let her breast satisfy thee at all times. See, you gotta, you gotta, be, you gotta have pleasure with your wife. That's your wife. Let her breast satisfy you. A man shouldn't be trying to get another woman's breast to satisfy him. Another a woman shouldn't be trying to give another man her breast to satisfy another man. Let your breast satisfy your man. That's them is made for him. Them is his drums. That's what you're supposed to do with him. What? Oh, I'm sorry. I was out. Is that too? Is that too much? I'm just saying. It said these. Hold on. Read the script because I didn't say it. God said it. Watch what he's saying. Watch this, Sister Victoria. Watch this. You got that look on your face. Let's see what the script is saying. Read the whole thing, soldier. For one. Read what you got. Read it strong. Read it strong, soldier. Nineteen. <laughs> Proverbs chapter five and verse nineteen. Read it. Let her be as the loving hind in pleasant robe. Breathe. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times. Watch this. And be thou ravished always with her love. You see that thing right there, sis? Oh, so I see. Y'all always think somebody thinking nasty. No. These is the things that the Bible says we have we supposed to be with our what? Wife. When you do these things, guys, what happens? Your wife cook you no good breakfasts in the morning. That's right. They get up, serve you food when you're ready to go to work, or they do uh, cook you special meals. These are the things that you do. The reason why is because you're doing your business. You're handling your business. That's what Exodus 21 is talking about right there, officer. Mm -hmm. 21 and 10. And thou get another wife. Read that for me, soldier. The book of Exodus, chapter 21, and verse 10. Read. If he take him another wife. If he take him another wife, watch this. Her food. Her food. Her rain. Her rain. And her duty of marriage. And her duty of marriage. Shall not be diminished. The duty of marriage is to not hold back due benevolence. That's the duty of marriage. Not to hold back due benevolence. 
Meaning when your wife's ready, she's ready. You better get ready. I'm tired, baby. She hit you with that skillet. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm ready now. <laughs> <laughs> Give me uh, please ask the 26 and 19. Watch this. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 26 and verse 19. Read. My son, keep the flower of thine age sound. Read. The flower of thy age sound. And give not thy strength to a stranger. Don't give your strength to no stranger, guys. Don't give no strength to your stranger. No stranger. Keep your wife satisfied and give not thy strength to a stranger. Read. Hold on real quick. Give me Tom chapter 4, verse 12. The book of Tobit, chapter 4, verse 12. Read. Beware of all whoredoms, my son. Beware of all whoredoms, my son. Read. And chiefly take a wife of thy seed, of the seed of thy father. Take the wife of the seed of thy fathers. Come on. And take not a strange woman to wife. Take not a strange woman to wife. Don't take a woman of another nation. Come on. Which is not of thy father's tribe. Which is not of the tribe of Israel. For we are the children of the prophets. We are the children of the prophets. Noah. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hold on, what did it say? Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Come on. Remember, my son, that our fathers from the beginning, even that they all married wives of their own kindred. Hold on, so it says, who did it say? Noah, Noah Abraham, what? Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Read. Remember, my son, that our fathers from the beginning, even... Even that they all married wives of their own kindred. So Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Watch this. Give me Amos. Give me Amos. Chapter 2, verse 7. The book of Amos, chapter 2, and verse 7. Three. The, the path after the dust of the earth on the head of... I'm sorry. No, 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 no. That's my bad. Hold on. Uh, 11. 2 and 11. I said 7. I'm sorry. Amos chapter 2 and verse set, 11. Three. And I raised up of your sons for prophets. I raised up your sons for prophets. And of your young men for Nazarite. Three. Is it not even thus, O ye children of Israel, saith the Lord? Says the Lord. Verse 7. 3 and 7. Verse 7. 3 and 7. Oh, 3 and 7. Yep. Amos chapter 3 and verse 7. Read. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto the, his servants, the prophets. And who is the prophets? The Israelites, right? So let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back to Tobit 4 and 12 one more time. The book of Tobit chapter 4 and verse 12. Read. <coughs> Beware of all whoredoms, my son. And chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy fathers, and take not a strange woman to wife, Read. which is not of thy father's tribe. For we are the children of the prophets. And who's the prophets, guys? Yeah. Noah. The children of the Israel. Children of Israel is the prophets. Watch this. Noah. Noah. Abraham. Abraham. Isaac. Isaac. And Jacob. Remember, my sons, that our fathers from the beginning, even that they all married wives of their own kindred. You see that we married wives of our own kindred. So let's go back to Ecclesiastes 26 and 19 one more time, please. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 26 and verse 19. Read. My son, keep the flower of thine age sound, and give not thy strength to, to, to strangers. Read. When thou hast gotten a fruitful possession throughout all the field, sow it with thy own seed. Sow it with your own seed. Come on. Trusting in the goodness of thy stock. Trusting in the goodness of thy stock. Come on. So thy race. What is that stock? So what is hold on, race. hold on, hold on, real quick. I'm sorry. What is that stock? We just read it. What is our stock? Your own kindred. Your own kindred, which is who? Israel. The children of Israel. And that stock now goes, soldier. So, so thy race. So thy what? So thy race. So thy race, because if you didn't know race was in the Bible, there you go. So thy race, which thou leaveth, shall be magnified. So you can say I'm a racist because I'm for my race. 
having the confidence of good of their good excuse me having the confidence of their good descent. He's having the confidence of their good descent. Give me your uh, Toby six and fifteen. Having confidence of their good descent. Toby six and fifteen. Why am I going thirteen? The book of Tobit, chapter 6 and verse 15. Read. Then the angel said unto him, Dost thou not remember the precepts which thy father gave thee? Read. That thou shouldest marry a wife of thy own kindred? That thou should marry a wife of thy own kindred? Wherefore, hear me, O my brother, for she shall be given thee to wife. That's, that's all I want is verse, uh, uh, verse 15. One more time. Then the angel said unto him, Dost thou not remember the precepts which thy father gave thee, that thou shouldst marry a wife of thy own kindred? So, and y'all see that? That precept is God's what? Laws. What is it uh, in my precepts I get learning? What is that? Uh, anybody remember? Psalm 419. Uh, Give me that. Give me that, please. The book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 104. Uh -huh. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. You see that? So through, so when he, when he asked Toby, now read 6 and 15 again. The book of Toby, chapter 6 and verse 15. Uh -huh. Then the angel said unto him, Dost thou not remember the precepts? Which thy father gave thee? Do you not remember the precepts which thy father gave thee? So through the precepts you didn't learn. Hold on real quick. I got one more. <clears throat> Give me your uh, Psalm. Go back to Psalm 119. And give me verse 40. The book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 40. Watch this. Behold, I have longed after thy precepts. For so long I have longed after thy precepts. Watch this. <clears throat> Quicken me in thy righteousness. Revive me in thy laws. So the precepts is how you learn the laws. So now let's go back to Tobit one more time. The book of Tobit, chapter 6 and verse 15. Read. Then the angel said unto him, Dost thou not remember the precepts which thy father gave thee, that thou shouldest marry a wife of thine own kindred? So that we should marry a wife of our own kindred. That we should marry a wife of our own kindred. Everybody see that? Yes. That we're supposed to marry wives of our own kindred. From her, give me Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4, please. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, and verse 4. Three. Marriage is honorable and all. So the Bible says marriage is honorable and all. And the bed is foul. And the bed is undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So we're going to stop right there. We're going to pick up right there next week. Next week is the fear of the Lord, part two. Everybody be ready for next week. The fear of the Lord is part two. Our boots is ready to hit the ground. We really appreciate y'all brothers and sisters. Looking out, listening uh, to us. Uh, we ain't got to do it. That's right. Uh, you can catch us on the Cash App. It's on the, it'll be on the bottom of the page. Uh, you can catch us on YouTube. This will be on YouTube in about an hour and a half. Uh, you can check it all out on YouTube. We appreciate y'all brothers and sisters listening. We are TTIC, and with that, we'll say shalom.